In this video, we are going to be looking at the validation control overview just to uh, demonstrate to you how the validation, the basics of validation controls. Uh, the purpose of this tutorial is to demonstrate a few of the properties of the validation controls. We will look at how to associate, uh, associate a validation control to a form field and how to validate the field. So let's head over to Visual Web uh, Developer 2008 and I have taken a time out to, in order not to waste time in the video, I've created a new project called Validation Examples, which I'm going to be using for to demonstrate some of these validation controls. And uh, this is just a simple um, a page with label and the text field. So I've named the text field. I've given them the ID of uh, txt name and uh, the one, same one for the age. I given it the value of ID txt age and the same thing for the pin txt pin. So just to demonstrate, I've also added a button and uh, this form is actually not going to do anything. Just need to demonstrate how the uh, they all works together. So uh, the way to once you drag all these uh, controls from the standard uh, to box you have to go to the validation area as you can see we have different sections so you go to the validation area and this is where you get all the validation controls so if you want to make sure that users actually type in something to the name field because we, the name is required so we put a required field validator beside it and the age as well we require them to type in the uh, age so required uh, we put the required field validator there as well same time because we want the user to enter um, we want them to enter the a whole number so that means you have to put compare validator because we, we need to compare it to uh, a built-in type such as a double type or integer type and so on or string so we want to make sure that they enter a whole number I want to make sure that it is required as well so this is an example of tying one multiple uh, multiple validation controls to a single field and lastly we want to make sure that users typed in um, the pin so required field validator so so what will happen now, now that we've added it to the page so what do we do let's go ahead and run our website now and um, if we should run the website now we're going to get an error and you're going to see the reason why in a minute so as you can see it said the control to validate property of required field validator cannot be blank and the reason why we go on error is because every time you have a validation control you need to assign it you need to actually associate it with uh, the text field that is going to be validating or the uh, other or, or any other uh, ASP.NET property uh, control that is going to be validating. So the required field validator will be used to validate the name, the txt name. So we have to associate it. We have to say uh, the control to validate. You have to go to the properties and say the control to validate is the txt name. Then the required field validated second one uh, is going to be used to validate the txt h. So control to validate will be txth and the compare validator will be used to validate uh, txth as well and that lastly the required vid validator will be used to validate uh, the txt pane so as you can see that uh, that's why it's always good just like I was saying to me in the previous video that this for example you have to name this something like required field validator maybe required field validator for name it's always good to give your uh, um, controls a name that makes sense so so now that we have done it so let's show you an example of how this works um, if I should go ahead and try to submit the form if I should try and submit the form now as you can see all the required field validators they are fired because they're expecting a value inside uh, so let me type a value inside each one of them it doesn't matter which value I type so as you can see still not allowing us to submit because the compare 
uh, validators is we have, it has not been set so that is why this one is still giving us an error so let's go ahead and actually put this uh, thing into use so what we do now is we actually use the compare validator to uh, compare this to make sure that it's an open number so how you do that is now that it's been selected you have to that's what it's asking you if you have any other control to compare and we do not have any other we're not com uh, comparing it to another um, so what we want to check is we want to use the operator the operator is a comparison operation to apply to value so we want to make sure that this uh, operator is set to uh, data type check and uh, as you can see you have to configure the data type check or you can check the operator you have to use the compare value if it's equal to a value not equal to a value or greater than a value less than or just a data type check you want to check the data type to either be a string which is just text or integer double a date value you can check to see if it's a date the user has typed in or currency so I'm going to choose an integer because I want to make sure that the user has entered a whole number into the field so that means if we run the website now uh, we should be able to get rid of all the uh, so if I type in now uh, my name if I type in D and H type 29 and uh, pin if I type one two three four if I submit the form everything should be fine even though the button form doesn't do anything but you can see that it we do not have any error messages anymore but if I should type 29.5 here which is not a whole number anymore we should get the compare validator this error message can be customized and we're going to be doing that in a minute so this is how you use the uh, the validation controls in ASP.NET uh, and in the uh, next video we're going to be talking about more properties of the different uh, validation controls thank you